Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, officially retailing for $49.99, is often found much cheaper than that. Sekiro is an action-oriented RPG by From Software, but it is not a Souls-like game. This is purely a single-player experience. There is very little character customization, with your secondary weapon being your only real point of customization. You do not have stats to grind or weapons to choose from. There is only one weapon for you to use, and you will use it from the very beginning to the last fight. You can get various skills to use with your one sword, but very few of them will make a difference in a hard situation. Your only real option in this game is to get good. In a true Souls game, you always have three options of what to do to proceed. You can grind the lesser enemies over and over again to increase your stats to near invincible levels. You can just keep doing the boss till you get lucky. Sometimes it happens. Lastly, you can get good. Like in the Art of War, know yourself and know your enemy and have no fear of battle. Sekiro only gives you that last option. You can't grind, and luck has absolutely nothing to do with any fight here. All you can do is learn their moveset, learn your moveset, and make it so your moves outdo their moves. This is a game that is all about the boss fights. Yeah, there's areas between the bosses where you fight lesser enemies, and you can stealth around and try to grind for prayer beads and things that'll slightly increase your health or attack, but that's all kind of irrelevant. Those beads and things only drop off of mini-bosses, and there's only so many of them. So learn when to deflect. Learn how many slashes the deflection lets you score with, and repeat. If dying in a game causes you frustration, don't play this game, because your shadow is going to die a lot more than twice. I personally wanted to walk away when playing this game, but I gave my word to someone that I was going to finish it, and so I did. And I'm glad I did, but honestly I never intend to play this game ever again. The graphics are very beautiful. I found the themes and story interesting. But I found the constant boss fight struggle to be wholly unenjoyable. But as I said, I look back and I'm glad I played this game, but never want to play it again. So it's very difficult for me to recommend it because I don't feel this game has any replay value whatsoever. And I can't think of a single moment where I look back and go, wow, that was a lot of fun when I was doing that. I mostly just sit back and think about how that final boss took four days of effort. And I don't mean that I tried a couple times each day and then I finally got it. Oh no no no. I spent multiple hours each day throwing myself against that boss fight. I died enough during my attempts at that boss fight to completely corrupt all of the NPCs with my deaths twice. And then I finally beat it thanks to the shield arm. And that wasn't really getting good, that was kind of exploiting a quirk of a game at that point. And I don't even know if you can still do that in the current patch. So I guess what I'm saying here is no, I don't recommend Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Maybe get it if you see it on a super cheap Christmas sale, because if you could get this game for like 15 bucks, I'd say yeah, you should experience Sekiro and what it has to offer. But nobody should spend the full $50 on this game. Ever. I did because I was under the mistaken impression I was getting a Souls game. But I didn't get a Souls game. I got Sekiro, and I don't even know what kind of game you even call it. A frustration simulator, possibly? Because that's all it did. It frustrated me. Please do like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends.